see if we can see our I'm not sure if our, our visitors are on yet. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. This is your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. I uh, just want to make sure all of our viewers can view me. So give me just a quick second here. Just want to uh, double check video here. Okay, for some reason we're not seeing uh not seeing our people. One second. Oh, praise the Lord. It seems like on our uh, Facebook page, we're not uh, able to get all of our viewers. And so we ask that you would bear with us just for a brief moment. Just want to check with my viewers just one moment, please. Okay. Uh, just waiting on a response. We have a real great topic today, so we want to get right into it. And we want to talk about uh, walking through your storm. So let's just bear with us just for another minute or two. Okay, we didn't get any response, so we're going to go ahead um, with our broadcast today. Uh, if you uh, can't see us on Facebook, just please uh, send us a message if you can't see video. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our class for today. And uh, we want to say praise the Lord to all the people of God. We give honor to God who's ahead of our life, to our honorable pastor and the person of Bishop Ellis Murchison Sr. of the Pentecostal Power Church and to all of the PPC Church Family, we say praise the Lord to you. Um, we give honor to my own wife, Missionary Newson, uh, and we thank God for each and every one of you that are following us on the Faith in God Internet TV. We're dealing with our new series today, uh, talking about walking through your storm, and uh, our subtopic is God will see you through. Just want to encourage the people of God that the Lord God will see you through, and so we have to continue to. Uh, have faith and trust God and believe um, that he's there 
in the midst of our storm. And so as we um, as we uh, get into this uh, topic today, I want you to go to uh, our familiar passage of scripture, which is found in um, Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to go to verse number 23 is where we uh, left off on yesterday. And so in Matthew 14 and 23, it says here, and when uh, he sent the multitudes away, he went up uh, into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And so Jesus took time um, to pray and, and talk to um, the Lord. And so we, we ought to take a look. He took time to pray to the father, praise the Lord. And so uh, we too should take time um, to pray. And it's very, very important that we keep a relationship uh, with God, because when the storm arise, um, we want to make sure that the Lord uh, hears us and we can rest assured and know that he's aware of our particular situation. As I said on yesterday, a storm can be um, a death of a loved one. It can be an illness. Um, it can be pain. It can be trouble. Uh, it can be, you know, worry. It can be discontentment. It can be a number of things. And so I encourage the people of God, you know, to uh, endure as you go through um, your different storms. And we know that uh, there's a lot going on uh, in our country. Uh, there's a lot going on in our world. And so we uh, need to be uh, encouraged as a people of God. Uh, I'm here to encourage you today. Um, to let you know that God is on your side and uh, he will not fail you. Praise the Lord. And so we want to make sure that you are, are encouraged. And we're going to give you some scriptures here, which is found in Matthew 14 and uh, 23. He went up to pray and it says, and when evening was come, uh, he was there alone. But the ship now was in the midst of the sea and it was tossed uh, with waves and for the wind was contrary. And so, um, there's contrary things that happen in our life. You know, um, sometimes life happens and we need to, uh, get in a position. We need to get in a position with the Lord, um, where we can humble ourselves, uh, seek the face of God that we might hear from the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes in our storm, we spend more time complaining, doing other things, other than doing what God commanded us to do. And, you know, he commanded us to praise and give thanks. And uh, first Thessalonians five and 18 says, you know, in, in everything, not for everything, but it says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So in everything. So in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your disappointment, Give God praise because he's worthy. He's still yet worthy. And regardless of what you're going through right now, God is yet very, uh, very uh, present. He's a very present help in the time of need, according to Nahum 1 and 7. And so we want to say praise the Lord. In our sidebar, we see Bishop uh, uh, Mark Jones is uh, on uh, the air listening to us. And so we say God bless you, uh, Bishop Jones. We say God bless you. Uh, we love you, man of God, and we just uh, thank God for you coming, uh, sharing that great word with us uh, in the uh, fall. And so we thank God for you. We look to hear from you uh, again. Uh, great revival, great revivalist. And so we thank God for you. Uh, so we want to continue on with the walking through your storm. You know, sometimes we feel like we don't have strength to walk because we're enduring uh, so much we're encountering so much. And so um, we have to remember uh, the uh, the particular uh, poem or um, uh, adage that was on the uh, footprint uh, uh, picture or, or or wall painting. You know, it showed one set of footprints and those one set of footprints demonstrated the Lord carrying in us. And so. Uh, the Lord is always uh, concerned about his people. So uh, don't let the enemy trick you and discourage you into thinking 
that God is not concerned about you because he is, you know, uh, and Peter, he says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. And so we can take our burden somewhere. We need to cast them upon the Lord. We don't, you know, we can, we can cast them on the Lord. We don't have to be burdened down. Uh, we don't have to be weighed down. Uh, we said, praise the Lord to, uh, our other brother, uh, Ernest Dunson, we want to say praise the Lord to our brothers. Well, Sherry Molax, Sister Molax, and just to all of you that are tuning into this broadcast. Just want to let you know, just want to encourage you uh, from a brief passage here in Mark. Um, I'm sorry. In Matthew chapter 14, we're at verse number 24 now. And it says, but um, the ship was in the uh, midst of the sea tossed. And this is in the waves and for the wind was contrary. And sometimes it seems like life. It's throwing you around based on how many trials and tests you come out of one storm going into the next thing. If it's not one thing, it's another. And so we want to encourage you and let you know that you can walk through your storm. Uh, God has given us power. According to Acts 1 and 8, you have received power. And so you have power to speak to your storm. You have power to speak to your mountain. But you must Make sure that your faith is up to part. You got to make sure you pray it up. Got to make sure um, that you're not having harboring uh, unforgiveness and unrepentance. We talked about that earlier this week. If you harbor an unforgiveness and uh, you're failing to repent of the things that you are aware of, praise the Lord. When they are brought to your attention, then that, that has been brought to, you know, your awareness. And so when God brings it to you through prayer, through fasting, through someone approaching you, uh, repent quickly and get that thing uh, right. Okay. And so we want to encourage you. Okay. Um, I hope. Uh, okay. Somebody said they can see us. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure everybody can view us. Cause I, at first I thought um, you weren't able to tune in. And so let us go a little bit farther here. We're going to go to verse 25. We're in Matthew uh, 14 and 25. It says, and in the fourth watch of the night, uh, Jesus went uh, unto them walking on the sea. Now, this was the Lord, you know, sometimes, you know, in our test, you know, um, the Lord don't tempt us with evil because uh, he don't tempt any man with evil, according to the scripture. But the Lord do test us as he tested Abraham. And sometimes in the midst of our test, we fail the test because we fail to have the faith that we say we have. Okay. A lot of us said we got faith, we got we got love, you know, we got the love of Jesus deep down in our heart. And then when the test come, uh, when the trial come, when the challenge or the difficulty or the misunderstanding come, then we can't forgive. We can't we don't have strength to bring forth. And so uh, if you say you have the strength to bring forth, you're going to be challenged. OK, and so we want to let you know, um, don't don't be afraid because you're being challenged. Just uh Take that challenge, observe it, look through the scripture, examine it and see where you are. And then when you see where you are, you can say, well, Lord, I need to come up. Or you can say, uh, uh, Lord, uh, I, I need more of you. You know, and sometimes we, we always shift the blame on others. And we say, you know, it's the other person that's always has the problem. But um, throughout my saved life, I've discovered uh, 95% of my problems was me. Okay. And so you'll figure it out after a while. So we just hope that you stop blaming others for your failures and pick up the pieces and start running for the Lord. Okay. And so we want to encourage you there. Uh, we're going to go a little bit farther here in verse number 26. When he came walking on the sea, uh, the disciples saw him walking, you know, on the sea and they were troubled. Don't you know, in your storm sometime, we get trouble. We may, you know, we may have our smile. We may have our church face on. You know, we may say, praise the Lord, all is well. But deep down inside, we're hurting. Okay. And so if you, if you fall in that category today and you're hurting, you can call us. We're on the line. Uh, we'll touch and agree and pray along with you that God will heal the hurt. Okay. And sometime in the process of healing the hurt, uh, God needs to sometime he needs to go back in and uh, do a work on some things. And I mean, 
bring some things to light so we can know the hurt can be healed if we would go ahead and face the fact that we were wrong. We need to repent. We need to go back to that person that we thought was wrong. In essence, we were wrong. We need to go back to that person, say, brother, sister, please forgive me. I was wrong and repair that relationship so you can stop hurting every time you see that individual. Okay. And it doesn't matter whether it be a family member, um, whether it be, you know, relatives, a member in the church or somebody on the job, doesn't matter what walk of life the person comes from. If you know you're wrong about a situation, humble yourself. Don't be filled up with pride, you know, uh, cause to walk through your storm, it's a bad thing to be going through a storm, walking through it, uh, you know, hurting even more. And you know what? The storm is not going to end until you face the storm. Praise the Lord. Sometime we run. I enjoyed my pastor on Sunday. He talked about you either running to something or you're running away from something. And that's so very true. Sometimes we run from people in our storm. Sometimes we say, Hey, I'm out of here. You know, we, we go, uh, you know, church, you know, church hopping and choir shopping, you know, but this may not be your time to run. My friend, this might be your time to stand. Okay. And he says here, having done all to stand, uh, stand therefore. And, uh, Ephesians six and, you know, it says, having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lawns girded about with truth. You need to eat this truth. The truth of the matter is you can run, uh, from one church to the other church, one choir to the other choir, one ministry to another ministry, but you can't get away from you. You know, you're going to have to face your own issues. You're going to have to face your own demons and you're going to have to confess that it's you that need help from God. It was not everybody else. It's me. Oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. And so I hope I said something to help you today. Let us go a little bit farther. Verse 27 straightway. Jesus spake unto them. You cannot tell me God won't speak to you in your storm. Maybe you're looking at the storm too hard. Maybe you're listening to all the chaos instead of finding that quiet spot or that quiet time to talk to Jesus so he can speak to you. Okay. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. And it says, be not afraid. Okay. Sometimes in the storm, we can be so fearful. You know, have you ever seen somebody? They were so afraid they ran into something and hurt themselves, And it really was just a shadow. You know, some people are afraid of, uh, you know, the dark. Some people have different fears and, you know, fear stems, you know, uh, from, uh, you know, our fleshly uh, emotion and humanity. And so it's natural to have fear. But when we are, when we are believers, when we have the Lord Jesus in our life, we should only fear him that's able to destroy the body and the soul and uh, cast into the lake of fire. And so, uh, yeah, we do have some fears that we must overcome, but we should not be to the point where the disciples were, they were with him and he went to the other side. He told them to go to the other side rather. And he told them, I'm going to go a little ways and pray. And he instructed them what to do. And they should have had been uh, along with Jesus long enough to know that he was not going to have them go somewhere to be, uh, be in peril. But during the test, sometimes it looks like during the test, it looks as if the test is going to overthrow us. Praise the Lord. Okay. But we have to remember in Isaiah uh, 54 and 17, he says, no weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Do you believe that? So it's very, very important. We have to know. We have to know what the word says when the storm arrives, when it brews up. Because sometimes if we're not in our Bible, you know, we're doing all these other things. We're going to get weak. We're going to fall short. We're not going to remember what God has said to us, you know, and that's why it's very, very important. You know, the scripture says, you know, the comforter. You know, the Holy Ghost going to bring all things back to your remembrance. It's going to bring it back, but it can't bring back something that's not there. This is why you need to read your Bible. You need to pray. You need to study. You need to show yourself approved unto God. Okay. According to second Timothy two and 15 study, show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we hope 
uh, that you would do that. Okay. And so let us go a little bit farther. It says in verse 28, and Peter answered and said, if it be thou Lord bid me to come on the water. And uh, he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. Okay. So he had, you know, he had uh, stepped out in faith and he walked in obedience and he was able to walk on water. The Bible says he was able to walk on water. And so uh, I know some people may say, well, you know, I don't know. I don't believe that he was able to walk on water. And so if God speak to you and give you a command, you can walk in faith and know that God is not going to fall short of his word. OK. And so, you know, that God had told him to step out. Jesus said, step out on the water. He stepped out on the water. But when the wind got boisterous, <laughs> sometimes when storm after storm, when illness after illness, uh, trouble after trouble keep coming, then that's when it starts to work on us. Okay. And you might be out there today. There might be something that's happening in your life and you may not understand, you know, um, why things are keep happening, you know, uh, use it as an opportunity, use it as a teaching opportunity to increase your faith. Don't always look at your storm as being a negative thing or a bad thing. Look at it as a time to be strengthened. Uh, look at it at a time, uh, look at it as an opportunity to commune with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we want to encourage you today. Okay. And, uh, we want to say praise the Lord to brother, uh, Reginald Orange, uh, uh, senior, uh, I want to say praise the Lord to all of you uh, on Facebook and YouTube that are listening to us today. Um, here's our sidebar for today. Um, you know, there is storms of life. Okay. So we don't want nobody to misunderstand us. There are storms of life. You know, life itself can bring a set, set of storms. You know, you know, somebody may have a financial situation. Somebody might have a, uh, a loved one that's ill, you know, somebody might be caring for someone, uh, you know, that they love dearly. And that can be a storm because it's extra pressure. It's extra weight. But guess what? You can cast your cares upon the Lord. You can take that person uh, to God in prayer and say, Lord, bless my spouse, bless my husband, uh, bless my wife, bless my daughter, bless my son. You know, you know, we got children that may have ran, you know, uh, away from God. We can pray. You know, a lot of times we try to talk, talk to our tongue and our face turn blue. But I know one thing that will work. Prayer. Prayer will get the job done. And so if you would just learn to pray about it, you know, um, you know, instead of, uh, doing a lot of worrying, a lot of unnecessary, uh, um, blood pressure increasing, you know, sometimes we, our blood pressure is up. Um, we feel sick. We feel faint because we got all of this stress and adversity coming at us, you know, but you know, the Bible let us know that we can, uh, be more than conquerors through him that loved us. But guess what? You know, we can uh, be cast down, but we don't have to be destroyed. OK, uh, we can be perplexed. but We don't have to be in despair. And so here's the thing. We're going to have to start exercising the faith, you know, the faith in the Savior. OK, exercise your faith in the Savior and you will be able to see that some storms that you're going through will not appear to be as great as they has been simply because of your changing of your thought process. It takes, it takes a while. You got to practice this. You got to start today. I, I just want to encourage somebody. I don't, I know you out there. You're listening. Listen to me. Start today. Start interceding. Start praying for that loved one that you concerned about. And leave them in the hands of God. And what I want you to do, I want you to uh, just, once you pray about it, just take your mind off of it. That's what, that's what true faith is. You know, if Peter 
would have took his mind off of everything that was going around him, if he would have taken his mind off of it, he could have still continued to walk. And that's us today. We still can walk through our storm, but we got to take our eyes, ears, mouth, and hands off of it and say, Lord, save me. That's what Peter cried out. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Uh, just want to read here. And he said, immediately he stretched forth his hand and caught him. And he said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt it? And so now I just want to talk for a minute right here when he said little faith. You know, a lot of us, we read this scripture, I'm sure, a lot of pastors, preachers, uh, saints, believers have read this scripture numerous of times. So have I. God brought this to my attention. This last verse I just read um, in verse uh, 31. Okay. He says, um, O thou of little faith. Now remember, remember, this is the nugget for today. Remember, there were 12 disciples. Only Peter stepped out of the boat. Jesus acknowledges. He said, he says, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? He says, little faith. There were 11 on the boat had no faith. <laughs> so that's the nugget for today. And so take your little faith and build on it. Take your little faith and stretch out on it. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, Peter was able to step out. He had little faith, but he started to doubt. So build on your little faith. But there was 11 other ones that had no faith because they didn't even take the risk. They said, I'm not taking no chance. I'm not stepping out on this water because that seems to be opposite to uh, what, what the law of physics. Okay. And so a lot of us, we talk about, you know, Murphy's law, you know, uh, the law of physics. OK, so the law of physics has to deal with, you know, uh, gravity and all these other different things that that we look to be tangible things. Water is, you know, H2O. And so we look at nobody can walk on water unless it's frozen. OK, and so if the water is not froze, how can we walk on? It? But of course, Apostle Peter and Jesus walked on the water and it wasn't frozen. And so we can see this in the scripture. You got to apply your faith, have tunnel vision, you know, tunnel vision. It's very important that you do that. If you're going to believe God in the situation, trust him with it. You know, a lot of times we say, well, you know, uh, our hard headed children or somebody that's not taking heed to counsel will say, well, I'm going to leave them in the hands of God. Then we take them back. Then We'll, 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 we'll harbor them in our heart a while and then we want to give them back to God. It's very, very important for you to just, if you believe God, just leave it in his hands. Praise the Lord. Leave that situation in the hands of God and watch God move upon your life. Okay. And so walking through your storm, God will see you through. Too many times we try to see ourselves through a storm. Too many times we try to fix the situation. Too many times we try to fix broken relationships and, uh, you know, uh, things that have been severed. Praise the Lord. But we have to look to God who is the one that's able to make a difference. Praise the Lord. You know, if we could fix everything. It, it would have been fixed already. Praise the Lord. And so in walking through your storm, you need to trust God. Believe God, my friend. want to say this. Um, I want to say this to you. Why lower the standard of holiness? Why lower the standards of holiness to please others? You know, let's raise, uh, you know, let's raise our level of humility. Instead of lowering standards uh, of what God has set in your life, why don't you uh, try, you know, raising your level of humility, you know, Sometimes our humility is at an all time low and it's very, very important, you know, that we get low, you know, so God can use us. Praise the Lord. You know, we have to get in the right place with God 
so that he can use us for his divine glory. Okay, I got another scripture for you. Um, I'm just going to read this because I don't have a lot of time. I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap up here. But I want to um, I want to read this uh, for you. Uh, in Job uh, 21 and 18, it says, Are they like straw before the wind, like chaff uh, swept away by a storm? And so um, I just want to... Uh, I just want to uh, read a verse above that. So I want you to go there with me. Uh, let's go to Job 21 and 15. He said, what is the almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Now, I want you to take this scripture and look at it. Job 21 and 15 down to 18. Okay. I'm still in 15. He says, what is the almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft come their destruction upon them? God distributed sorrows and his anger. They are as stubble before the wind and as the chaff that the storm carried away. God laid up his iniquity for his children and he rewarded him and he shall know it. Okay. And so I just want to say this, you know, sometimes when devastation comes, upon those that have failed to heed to the Lord God Almighty. God comes time, time, and time again to warn us. There's one scripture in Isaiah says, in Isaiah 1, I think it's in Isaiah, uh, it's in the book of Isaiah where it says, he's going to mock you in the day of your calamity. You know, when you spread your hands, Isaiah chapter 1, I think, so when you spread your hands and begin to call on God and begin to pray, he gonna, he going to turn his face from you. And so this is why I say to the people of God, you know, be encouraged because it's very, very important for you to know that God wants you to walk through your storm. Doesn't want you to give up. Doesn't want you to quit. Doesn't want you to murmur and complain. But what God wants you to do, he wants you to stretch out on your faith. Praise the Lord. And so I hope I've said something today that would encourage you on this Faith in God Internet TV broadcast. Our, our whole thought process is to encourage you to have greater faith in God and more reliance upon his word. And so we want to continue to sow uh, to our, our community, a diverse population in our community and abroad, the world abroad, and we want to thank God for you tuning in to us today. Now, we do have more scriptures we'll be visiting on tomorrow, but we just wanted to get things off the ground today um, so you can come back and uh, join us tomorrow. We will be on tonight. Uh, our Bible class will be on our uh, YouTube channel, PPC Milwaukee. So we ask that you would join us there. Um, the elders, uh, Elder Thompson and myself, we will be teaching Sunday school on Tuesday night, which is tonight at 7 p.m. And uh, the title of the lesson is The Lord, He is God. Okay. We'll be talking out of our next lesson, um, The Lord, He is God, which is coming out of uh, Kings chapter 18. Okay. And so we ask that you would follow us there tonight. And so I hope that we've said something to bless you and encourage you. Uh, I want to say, uh, God bless you to all of the saints of the Pentecostal Power Church family. I uh, want to thank God for uh, Bishop Mark Jones joining us today. I hope that we've said something uh, to encourage the people of God. Please continue to follow us, okay? And we want to say God bless you. Until next time, I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newson. We're with the Faith in God Internet TV, and we say God bless you. Okay, and we want to put something on the screen for you uh, that you would take a look here. And uh, we want to put that on the screen for you. Okay. 
So we ask that you would continue to support us. Uh, please uh, use the information that's on your screen to support us. And we do appreciate it. I uh, want to thank each and every one that has supported us. And those of you that desire to, uh, you have an opportunity to support the Faith in God Internet TV ministry. And so we definitely want to keep the, the broadcast going. And so we ask that you would uh, so bountifully uh, do the broadcast and follow the directions on the screen. Okay. And so uh, if you have any questions, you can always call us. Um, if you have any questions about how to sew in the proper way uh, to uh, sew into it, you can always call us. Our telephone number is 414-628-0568. All right. So we're always uh, uh, accessible to the people of God. So you can call us if you need us. 414-628-0568. And so we want to say God bless you. Uh, we want to thank you in advance. Uh, we uh, definitely want to uh, put our times on the screen. We want to put our times on the screen so you can see that as well. And so that's when we'll be broadcasting. The top one is our pod bean Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which is our touch and agree. And uh, touch and agree is from 12 to 1 on Friday. Monday and Wednesday, we're here on at 12 p.m. to 1230. Okay. And uh, the bottom two, which is YouTube and Facebook, which you are on now, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Due to us being uh, uh, off the air last week, we are catching up on some things. And so uh, we definitely will uh, keep you alert when we're not broadcasting. OK, so we just ask that you will continue to follow us. OK, and so with no further ado, we want to say God bless you and uh Thank you for uh, being on our broadcast today. Okay, I'm your host, Ella Gregory Newson, with the Faith in God Internet TV, and we say God bless you.